Today we're going to be reviewing the first four lessons in Chapter 8 uh, to help prepare us for our quiz. Um, so let's start by taking a look at some questions from 8-1. Uh, remember in 8-1 we were working on the distributive property, so um, 4 times j and 4 times 4. Notice the symbol is going to stay the same. Uh, we changed everything to addition in this lesson, so we're going to go, go 4 times j plus 4 times 4 is 16, and this is the simplified expression. Okay, so now when we do this, uh, again, the number's on the other side, but that doesn't really matter. First thing I want to do is change everything to addition, so let's go adding a negative n. All right, so let's do negative 3 times m, which is negative 3m plus negative 3 times negative m. That's a negative times a negative, so it's going to be a positive 3n. And uh, that would be my simplified answer. All right, so again, change your subtraction to addition of the opposites. We'll add negative 8. So 2 times w is 2w. And 2 times negative 8 is plus negative 16. And that's how I'd like to see your answer, um, using addition rather than subtraction. All right, so moving into 8-2, we were solving two-step equations. First thing I want to do is change everything to addition, so adding a negative 7m. Okay, um, now I'm going to underline like terms. Um, 5 is like 11, but they're on opposite sides of the equal sign, so we leave those alone for now. So let's combine like terms. Uh, 5 plus, if I owe 7 and I have 9, that means I have 2m equals 11. Now I can go to solve my two-step equation. First, get rid of addition and subtraction. So subtract 5 on both sides. Okay, draw your line. And we have 2m equals 6. Okay, and then uh, since this is multiplication, we'll need to divide by 2 on both sides. So that way, m, because 2 divided by 2 is 1, so that gets rid of our coefficient, m equals 3. And that's our answer. Uh, if we wanted to, we could go ahead and check that. Um, 2 times 3, because remember we simplify here, so 2 times 3 is 6, and 6 plus 5 is 11, so that all works out. All right, our next equation here. Um, there's nothing to simplify, uh, but we need to get rid of the addition subtraction first, so let's subtract 7 on both sides. Uh, remember, the work that I'm showing here is exactly how I want to see your homework done. Um, showing all of these steps. So let's bring z divided by 2 down. And that's going to be equal to 3. Now, z is being divided by 2, so the opposite is multiplying by 2. And we can say 2 over 1 because that's in fraction form. And over here, we can just say times 2 because it's not a fraction over there. So the 2's are going to cancel, and I'm left with z equal to 6. All right, so if I want to check that, I can. 6 divided by 2 is 3, and 3 plus 7 is 10, so that works. All right, last but not least here, we'll check this, uh, this last example. Uh, we'll move this up so we have a little bit of room. Um, change all your subtraction to addition of the opposite, so now it's plus negative 2b. Um, first thing I need to get rid of here is the constant. So right now it's a positive 15, so let's subtract 15 on both sides. So that way I can get negative 2b by itself, um, and then a negative and a negative. I owe 9 and I owe 15, so that means I owe 24. Now I need to get rid of the coefficient, and the coefficient is negative, so go ahead and divide by a negative 2 on both sides. So the negatives will cancel, the 2s will cancel, and I'm left with b. Okay, it is a negative divided by a negative, so that's a positive. 24 divided by 2 is 12, so a positive 12 is my answer. So if I were to check that, um, 12 times negative 2 is negative 24, and 15 plus negative 24 would give us negative 9, so that works. All right, in 8-3, we were writing two-step equations, so let's go ahead and practice that again. Three more than. So I'm writing that as I go 3 more than. Okay, and then we have 8 times a number. So that's 8n is equal to, all right, and then we have 19. So now let's rewrite that as 8n plus 3 equals 19. 
All right, so for right now, we weren't really expected to um, solve the equation, but we can go ahead and do that anyway. So minus 3 on both sides. All right, so we're going to get uh, 8n equals 16. And then um, I'm going to write that up here so I can have some room. 8n equals 16. Divide by the 8 on both sides. So that way n equals 2. And that's your solution to this equation. Um, so 3 more than 8 times the number. That number is 2. All right, so we have another one here. Um, 12 less than is the flip it sign. 7 times the number, 7n, is 16. All right, so now I do have a flip it sign in there, so let's rewrite it. 7n minus 12 equals 16. All right, then we can add 12 on both sides. Um, we get 7n is equal to 28. I'll rewrite that up here so I have some room. Divide by 7 on both sides. N is 4. So the number they're referring to there is 4. Okay, so we have one more example here from... 8-3. Uh, Let's move this up. The world's two highest dams are both in uh, Tajikistan. The Rogan Dam is 35 meters taller than the Nurik Dam. Okay, so the Rogan Dam, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, write Rogan Dam is 35 meters taller than the Nurik dam. So this kind of, I'm writing it as I go. The Rogan Dam is 35 taller, we're adding, than, flip it, the Nurik Dam. Together, they are 635 meters tall. So if I were to, to say R plus N equals 635 meters, it says find the height of the Nurik Dam. Okay, so I have a little equation here set up to solve for the Rogan Dam. So I'm going to rewrite it correctly. So it's going to be um, n plus 35. So n plus 35 is the expression I can use to solve for the Rogan Dam. All right, but then we also have the Nurik Dam. Rogan Dam plus the Nurik Dam equals 635. So what I can kind of do here is substitute um, this n plus 35 in for this r. So what I'm going to have is n plus 35, and that stands for the Rogan Dam, plus n. That's the Nurik Dam equals 635. Okay, so do you see how these, this equation or this expression right here is equal to this expression right here? Because r stands for n plus 35. So instead of using r, I just use n plus 35. So that way I just have one variable. If I have one variable, then I know I can solve it. Plus, it says find the height of the Nurik Dam, so we're getting it all into n's anyways. So now when I simplify this, I have 2n, so I can say 2n plus 35 equals 635. Alright, let's go ahead and subtract that 35 on both sides. We get 2n equals 600, and then we'll divide by 2 on both sides to get n equals 300. Now let's check out our units. Um, that would be 300 meters is the Nurik Dam. So that means the Rogan Dam is 35 meters taller. So uh, the Rogan Dam would be 335 meters tall. And that does make sense that 335 plus 300 equals 635. But we weren't asked to find the Rogan Dam height we were just asked to find the Nurik Dam height. So we're actually just done right there. Uh, the Nurik Dam is uh, right around 300 meters tall. All right, so in 8-4, we were solving equations with variables on each side. So again, the first thing I want you to do is change all subtraction to addition. Just kind of helps us use the commutative property a little bit better. Commutative property says we can put things in any order. So um, we can think about that. Now, remember, um, which variable expression is larger? Well, is f larger than negative 7f or greater than? Um, yes, f is greater. So let's go ahead and add 
7f to both sides. And the reason I'm adding 7s is because to cancel it, I have a negative 7, so I need to do the opposite and add 7. So um, if I owe 7 and have 7, that's going to be 0. So um, let's go ahead and draw our line across. We're going to have 4 and then equals, because remember this is 0. And then 1f, because remember the coefficient is 1, so I'm going to have 8f plus negative 12. Now I need to get rid of this constant, so I need to add 12 on both sides. All right, let's see if we can make a little bit of room here. Um, I'm going to write this over here. So this is going to be 0, so I'm going to write 8f equals 4 plus 16. 4 plus 12 is 16, and then I divide by the coefficient. Um, Sorry, I should have wrote that the other way, not F8, but, uh, but 8F. Okay, and then divide by 8 over here. And so the coefficient cancels, uh, so F is equal to 2. So if I were to put that in there, um, I would get the same number on both sides. Um, negative 7 times 2 is negative 14. So 4 plus negative 14 would be negative 10. And if I did 2 plus negative 12, that would be negative 10. And negative 10 does equal negative 10. So that all works. All right, so now for this equation, again, let's change everything to addition before we get started. All right, now look at your variable expressions. Which one is greater? The 3x is greater, so I'm going to move the negative 7x. So I'm going to add 7x to both sides. All right, so let's bring everything down. We have 10x plus negative 32 equals, now this is 0, and then I have 28. Now let's get rid of our constant, get rid of addition and subtraction. So this is a negative 32, so let's get a positive 32 to cancel that out. Whatever you do to one side, you got to do to the other. All right, so now let's bring down what we still have. So we have 10x, uh, this is 0, and then I'm going to have... 60. Now, divide by your coefficient. Uh, the coefficients cancel, so x equals, uh, the zeros cancel here, so x equals just plain 6. All right, and if you wanted to go ahead and plug that in, uh, you certainly could. 6 times 3 is 18, and 18 plus negative 32. All right, so we can find the difference between 32 and 18 here if we want. All right, we'll give us negative 14 because uh, the negative value was greater. So we get negative 14 equal to, now let's plug 6 on this side. We get uh, negative 7 times 6, which is negative 42. All right, so we go 42, and we're going to subtract 28. All right, and we're left with 14. Again, the negative value was bigger, so negative 14 does equal negative 14. So that worked out for us. All right, uh, if you have any other questions, feel free to re-watch any of the um, lesson videos or check out the online tutorials um, for, for this assignment.